Today we're going to build a big wardrobe for the tiny apartment with handleless doors and drawers that also works as a space divider. Boom! Okay, so now that the entry closet is done, it's time to build the last big piece of furniture for the apartment. I plan to raise the storage all the way to the ceiling, but I'll save that for later. I will be using laminar eucalyptus plywood for this project, but this can be done with MDF or even melamine covered particle board, although plywood will give you the most durable and strong construction. This wardrobe will be the most important division for the space, so we can get a small entry area that brings some privacy to the living area when the door is opened. Also, it makes for a big storage solution for such a small space. I think that in order to create a comfortable living zone on a tiny apartment, the furniture needs to be thinner and taller, maybe even going right up to the ceiling so that the most floor space is preserved free. So this wardrobe is going to be thinner than most wardrobes, being just deep enough to accommodate clothes hangers with a slight wiggle room. I made plans for this project that you can find in the description in case you are interested in building your own. So this construction doesn't have any special joinery, I just butt jointed everything with screws and in some interior dividers I used pocket holes. Since I was going to paint it all white in the end, and this is basically a built-in project meant to belong to the space, I wasn't afraid of leaving some screw heads visible as I will disguise it all. This construction process is very similar to the entry closet that I posted a couple months back, so if you watch this other video, you will get extra useful information that I didn't cover in such detail in here. I also used the support blocks concept here to help me position the middle sections in place since I was working alone. There was no other option for me than building this project in sight because of its huge nature and having a track saw connected to the dust collector was imperative to keep the space clean and reduce the mass as much as possible. So here I was attaching the backer pieces that I decided to have the same thickness as the rest of the structure to give the build full strength. So I built everything here out of 18mm plywood. Besides working as a room divider, this wardrobe also has the look of a wall on the back, so using a flimsy sheet good was not a way to go for me. This closet has two sections, and I decided to build them separately, mostly because the walls in this space are not 90 degrees nor even close to that, as you probably have noticed from past projects that got some trapezoidal structure to them. And because I didn't want to lose any storage volume, it seemed to make more sense to build a smaller section meeting the angle corner than ignoring it and have a hidden gap next to the wall. Let me take a moment to tell you about Laminar, the Portuguese producer of the eucalyptus plywood. Besides Asia, it is extremely rare to find a factory producing this type of plywood, which makes them rather special. I found it to be quite strong and hard, as it can be a great solution for structural works, as well as pieces of furniture of a bigger scale. As the faces are great looking due to the straight grain, it can be used for shelves, tabletops and other woodworking or carpentry projects. On their factory, everything is still traditionally manufactured and I decided to film the process to show you, so I hope you enjoy this segment. They produce all kinds of plywood meeting the customer's needs using other species of wood as well as veneers. 
You can find the link to their website in the description. So now let's get back to the project. At this point, I had to check if things were plumb and leveled. The floor was not, so I had to lift the left side of the wardrobe and insert shims with my feet until it was all looking fine. This wardrobe is perpendicular to the entry closet, so when you enter the space, you have no idea that this room is a trapezium, because this built-in furniture disguises the fats. I then connected both components and also drove a few screws to connect these into the entry closet. I want to hang the wall lamp I made about two years ago here on the entry, so I made a wire installation right away. It will be integrated in the wood strip that stabilizes the meeting edges from the backer pieces. So the electrical wire will be hidden along this seam and running into the bottom area of the wardrobe that will have the drawers. I found a strip of maple that seemed the perfect size and I just did a couple passes on the drum sander to make it smooth. I could then create a slot for the wire in the middle of the strip and cut it to length. Because the hole into the bottom area of the wardrobe was drilled on an angle, I gouged a little bit of material out to make room for the wire to curve into the hole. The installation was pretty simple using a pin nailer. I could then start the preparation for painting. I applied mud to the panel seams and the corner. It was my first time using this paper strip meant to disguise the meeting lines and please do not pay attention to what I did as this is probably very wrong. I had no experience at all on this field but still wanted to give it a try. It would be so much easier to start this type of builds by painting the panels and then cutting and assembling and I acknowledged that while building the entry closet but unfortunately I forgot again and repeated the mistake on this build so if you can do apply the finish before you even start assembling to avoid countless tedious hours of extra work in the end. I sanded and primed the whole closet before giving it three coats of cloud white paint which is the same shade of white from the concrete walls. I also applied caulk on the existing gaps and could finally hang the wall lamp. I can now work on the drawers and for this I will be using 12mm pre-finished birch plywood. This plywood is not the best looking but the fact that it is pre-finished was important to me because there is no extra work needed besides cutting and assembling. I cut everything in strips of 16cm and then cut the strips to length to match the drawer slide's dimensions. I clamped the scrap piece to the table saw fence to work as a stop block so that all pieces come out exactly the same length.
The grooves to receive the bottom panels were made at the table saw using a dado blade set. Here I was picking the worst looking faces to be positioned towards the back of the wardrobe and the front where a false front will be attached. I then drilled a bunch of pocket holes. There are specific holes to receive the drawer slides and I made a quick jig to be able to quickly drill all the holes in the correct position. It was time to cut the drawer bottoms to size and for those I used 6mm pre-finished birch plywood. Assembling the boxes was a very easy task and did put a couple screws on the bottom for reinforcement and keep everything square. Back to the wardrobe, I could then screw the undermount drawer slides to the cabinet and install the drawer boxes. These are T-pon drawer slides for handleless drawers, which means that they will open and close with a click. So I had to add these components in order for them to work with a click. I can finally start working on the front and those will be made out of Baltic birch to match the look of the wall bed, the sofa and the kitchen. I did my best to arrange the parts so that they were matching the grain to give it a continuous look. For the concealed hinges installation, I utilized a Rockler jig that makes it very easy to drill the large holes in the perfect place every time. I will link all these hardware and jigs in the description below for you to check out. The hinges that I'm installing here actually will get modified in order to work with the tip-on devices that will allow these doors to open with a click just like the drawers. Basically the spring needs to get removed from a hinge and although you might find springless concealed hinges on the market, they are not very common. In case you can't find them or want to use hinges that you already have, I will soon post a quick tips video showing how to remove the springs from the hinge, so stay tuned for that. I used another Rockler template jig to drill the holes for the hinge plates and snap the hinges into them. This wasn't very easy to do alone because the doors were big and heavy for me.
After cutting the false fronts, I went ahead screwing them from behind to the boxes. I wanted to see if the size was okay before applying the finish. I have installed false fronts many times on my projects, so this time I'm not explaining the process step by step. I removed all the doors and fronts to finish them with water-based varnish. The build is basically finished, all I need to do now is to make the rod hangers and install two shelves. I drew the rod hangers on the computer and cut them on my X-Carve out of black MDF. For the rod, I simply used a thick wooden dowel. Perfect! Here I was drilling holes to receive shelf pins. To finalize the wall look at the back, I nailed the baseboard and filled the gaps with caulk. The lamp wire can now cross its way to the closest wall outlet and I still need to work on the electrical connection, but that won't be on this video. The wardrobe is ready to receive clothes and I'm super pumped to have one more big piece of furniture checked from my builds list. If you want to build a similar wardrobe, I got plans available in the description below. I didn't include the angle side because obviously it won't apply to your case, instead I planned everything with nice and square angles. Now let's see what it looks like when you enter the apartment. So here's the entry closet and I made a notch on the baseboard to receive the sliding door. I still need to work on the electrical connection for the wall lamp, but so far I'm really happy to see that things are really taking shape. Alright, so I hope you got some great ideas for your next project and if you want to support my work go ahead and grab some stuff from my online shop at gethandstory.com shop. I've got t-shirts, hoodies, maker bandanas, handmade notebooks, mugs and a lot more. A big shout out to Laminar and all my Patreon supporters who made this video possible. If you want to become a supporter too, head over to patreon.com slash gethandsdurry. Thanks everyone for watching, stay safe and keep getting your hands dirty. Até já.